Today we're going to talk about the principle of concentration. In my estimation, the ability to focus and to concentrate single-mindedly on one thing at a time are the two key qualities of success. The lack of focus and the lack of concentration explain more failures than perhaps any other two single principles in the field of success and business. Every great human achievement is the result of single-minded concentration. Nothing great was ever accomplished except by sustained, concerted energy focused on a single point. One of the most important military principles is the principle of mass and concentration, bringing all your powers to bear on a single point and carrying it overwhelmingly. You see, the natural tendency in life is always to do what is fun and easy rather than what is hard and necessary. Few activities require greater self-discipline than picking your most important task and sticking to it without diversion or distraction. And then the rewards, concentrated, directed activity is a source of energy and enthusiasm. When you're working on something single-mindedly, without diversion or distraction, on something that's important to you, the more you work on it, the harder you work, the more progress you make, the more excited, the more energetic, and the more enthusiastic you feel. And when you finish the task, task completion generates a feeling of competence, mastery, and self-esteem. And this is critical to understand, because remember, our true feeling of self-esteem only comes from a feeling of competence. And competence requires that we complete a task. And it also requires that we complete important tasks. And all important tasks tend to be difficult and require tremendous discipline to force ourselves to finish the few final steps that give us that winning feeling, that excitement of having crossed a critical finish line. Your personal effectiveness will be determined by your ability to manage your time to its great detailed the plans for their accomplishment. We said a little bit earlier, under the principle of purpose, that you must have clear goals in order to focus your energies and concentrate your talents. And you must have detailed plans in order to work step by step, accomplishing the activities that take you to your goal. The next step is to set priorities on your activities. Use the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle that we talked about earlier, that 80% of the value of what you do comes from 20% of what you do, that any list of 10 things that you have to accomplish to achieve a goal, two of those 10 things will be worth more than all the others put together. Always pick the most valuable use of your time. Always ask yourself, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? This is the key question for time management. This is the question that you must ask and answer over and over again, day after day, week after week. What is the most valuable use of your time right now? What is the most valuable use of your time right now? And always stay with the task that is the most valuable use of your time. Because anything other than the most valuable use of your time is, relatively speaking, a waste of your time and a waste of your life. There's always enough time to do the important things, although there is never enough time to do everything that needs to be done. So focus on those few areas where excellent performance can make an extraordinary difference. Focus on the vital few versus the trivial many. Focus where you can really make a difference with your efforts. Focus on your areas of greatest personal strengths. One of the qualities of all leaders is that they pick the areas of greatest personal strength and they only take jobs and accept responsibilities where they have the ability and the interest to do an outstanding job. So focus on those areas where you have unique strengths and abilities and delegate everything else to others. Do more of the things that you're better at. Always focus on strengths. Focus on the strengths in the situation, the strengths in other people, the strengths within your own talents and abilities. Concentrate your resources on the key areas where outstanding results are possible. Continually refer back to the 80-20 rule. What is the most valuable use of my time? What are my key result areas? What are my vital output areas? Always focus your talents where you can make a difference. Concentrate always on results, not activities. All peak performers are results-oriented. Ask yourself, why am I on the payroll? What specific measurable results are expected of me? What specific measurable results are expected of me? Ask yourself, what one thing could I do that if I did really well would be more important to my career than everything else put together? And then focus single-mindedly on doing that one thing. Never do things of secondary importance while there are things of primary importance left undone. Remember, effective people do first things first, and they do things one at a time. Now, it's interesting. One of the major reasons for failure in life is that people do not discipline themselves to do what is most important and to do one thing at a time. So they try to do several things at once. They do nothing to any degree of quality, and they very seldom finish. 
Once you have selected your highest payoff activity, begin it immediately and stay with it until it is 100% complete. What we find is that if you pick up a task and put it down without finishing it and then come back and pick it up and put it down without finishing it, come back and pick it up and so on, that you can spend 500% of the time necessary on any task by continually coming back and picking it up and beginning again. Because each time you pick it up, you have to review and find out where you were when you left it. So stay with your tasks till they're 100% complete. Not 95%, not 98%, but 100% complete. Test yourself, challenge yourself to stay at it until it's finished completely. A major demotivator and time waster is coming back and picking up that task over and over. So discipline yourself to work with single-minded concentration on those key tasks that can really make a difference. Alec McKenzie recommends the policy of single handling, which means that once you pick up any task, stay with it till it's finished. Organize your tasks, put them in order of priority, and then once you've picked up a piece of stationery or piece of correspondence, a letter, or any task at all, stay with it until it's done. The inability to concentrate on important tasks is a major reason for failure, because all important tasks are difficult, and all unimportant tasks tend to be easy. So be very alert. A recent time management exercise that I heard about, the instructor had everybody in the room list on two sides of a piece of paper. On the right-hand side of a piece of paper with a line down the center, list all of the things that are very hard to do in their work. On the other side of the paper, write all of the things that are fun to do. And then he asked each person in the group, which list contains the items, the accomplishment of which would make the greatest amount of progress in the success of your company. And they found that all of the things that would make a major contribution were on the list under the hard things to do. All the fun things, all the easy things, all the enjoyable things seldom make any kind of a contribution. Every time you stay at a key job until it is finished, you feel like a winner. You get a burst of energy, satisfaction, and self-esteem. So practice single handling your tasks. Once you put them up, don't put them down until you're finished. But he knows what the most valuable use of their time is. Here are some key points with regard to concentration. Number one, the ability to concentrate single-mindedly is vital to success. Its absence is a major reason for failure. And the self-discipline to develop the habit of concentrating single-mindedly on one thing at a time is something that you must develop if you wish to be successful. Number two, concentrate on your key result areas. Remember, there is never enough time to do everything that you have to do, but there's always enough time to do the important things. So concentrate on the output areas where you can really make a difference by bringing your talents and your energies to bear, like a magnifying glass concentrating its heat intensely in a particular spot. An important point with regard to concentration is this, is that concentration is not the same as a magnifying glass, and that a magnifying glass stays on one spot. Concentration is staying along one line in the direction toward one target without deviation. Number three, always set priorities on your task. Use the 80-20 rule and concentrate on the most valuable use of your time. Number four, think on paper. Plan every day in advance. Work from a list. All top time managers use a list. In fact, if you're not using a list now, you can increase your productivity by 25% by using a list starting today. The best time to make a list is at the end of the previous day. Before you finish for the day, take everything that you have yet to do from that day and everything you have to do tomorrow and put together your list for the next day. If you make your list the day before, your subconscious can work on that list while you sleep. And very often in the morning, you'll have insights and ideas on how to accomplish those goals and objectives. One other point is that if you don't make a list, you'll always be tending to fool around with the irrelevant tasks, and you'll always be sidetracked by every interruption that comes along. So always work from a list. Anything that you have to do, write on that list, and if it's not on the list, don't do it. Number five, develop a sense of urgency and a compulsion to closure. Work fast. One of the rarest single qualities in business and industry is a sense of urgency. Less than 2% of people have it. In fact, a recent survey among the 106 chief executive officers where they were given 26 qualities to evaluate. And the question was, which of these qualities would most rapidly put a young executive onto the fast track to promotion in your company? And the executives were almost unanimous in selecting two of the 26 points. So the first point was the ability to separate the relevant from the irrelevant, the ability to set priorities and choose what is more important over what is less important. The second quality that they selected 
was a sense of urgency, the ability to get on with the job and get it done fast. You see, if you develop a reputation for speed and dependability, if you work fast and you get the job done when it's given to you, you'll be given more jobs to do, of greater responsibility, with greater pay and greater opportunity for advancement. But if you only do the job slowly, or you only do it when you get around to it, then you'll always be the last one to which the important assignments are handed. Remember this, number six, fast tempo is essential to success. The faster you work, the more energy you have. The slower you work, the tireder you get. That's why it is so important to pick the right field for yourself, your area of excellence, where you have unique talents, something that you enjoy doing, something that you're uniquely qualified to do, because when you find the right area for yourself, what will happen is that you'll love your work and you'll want to work fast, and the fast tempo will not only give you more energy, give you more excitement, give you more enthusiasm, but will enable you to do more in a shorter period of time and to increase your value by increasing your productivity. Number seven, the urgent is seldom the important, and the important is seldom urgent. In other words, the urgent tasks that come up on an hour-to-hour -hour basis, which will sidetrack you away from your major tasks, can only be dealt with by working from a list. Once you write the project or the task down on a list, you'll find that it loses its urgency. The important is seldom urgent. In other words, the tasks that you have to do, your key result areas, your major payoff tasks, are seldom urgent, but they are things that have to be done. And it's absolutely essential that you allocate ample time to finish your tasks and finish them with single-minded concentration in advance of your deadlines. We're going to talk about the principle of cooperation. Because your ability to get along with others will determine your success in life more than any other single factor. Charles Schwab, the great steel magnet, said, I will pay more for the ability to get along with others than for any other skill in American industry. Some years ago, the Carnegie Institute of Technology analyzed 10,000 de-hires, people who were let go from their positions over a period of seven years. They found that 95% of the people who were let go from their companies were let go because of their inability to work well with others. 85% of all the problems you will ever have in life will involve other people. Well, the flip side of that is, of course, that 85% of all the happiness that you'll ever experience will probably come from other people also. The fact is that in life, almost all of our problems seem to talk back. To earn the cooperation of others, the very best way is to practice the golden rule, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Practice the law of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow in your relationships, you will reap in your relationships. If you want people to be cooperative with you, you must be cooperative with them. Treat everyone with courtesy, kindness, and patience. Remember, every person you meet is carrying a heavy load. Psychologists tell us that you have a healthy personality to the degree to which you can get along with the greatest number of other people. And the more you like yourself, the more you will like others, and the more they will like you. If you practice self-discipline and have a clear sense of purpose, if you are good at what you do and accept complete responsibility for your actions, if you strive to serve others with what they want and concentrate on your highest payoff activities, you will tend to be a positive, self-confident individual and you will have no trouble getting along with others. There are some key ideas that can help you to be more effective with others. For instance, to build a base of power and influence, the safest way is to build a network of dependencies. Your power in business or industry or politics will always be determined by who you can call upon for help and assistance. You build your power base by seeking out every opportunity to assist others with no immediate expectation of return. If you remember the movie The Godfather, where Don Corleone became the Godfather by doing favors for other people, and he would say, upon fulfilling a favor for someone, perhaps I will be able to call upon you for a kindness someday. And what he did is he built up a network of dependencies, people that he had helped and who owed him favors, and he could always call upon them. Of course, this strategy presupposes that you are good at your work. And let me make this point very clear. As you can only build power within an organization of value to the degree to which you are excellent at what you do. If you attempt to build a power base to compensate for a lack of excellence, what will happen is that it will just be perceived as being cheap politics and it will seldom work out. To assure greater success in meetings and negotiations, for instance, the key is preparation. You will always do better with a plan than without. So prepare, prepare, prepare. The power is always on the side of the person with the most knowledge and the best notes. 
and the most thorough effort. preparation is if you want others to be interested in you, be interested in them. If you want others to like you, like them. If you want other people to respect you, then respect them. If you want others to believe in you, believe in them. If you want to have a friend, be a friend. The law of indirect effort is the key to effective relationships with other people. Out interruptions. Listen without thinking at the same time of what you're going to say as soon as a speaker takes a breath. Listen quietly and patiently and calmly without interrupting or attempting to interrupt. Number three, pause before replying. Pausing is classy. If you allow three to five seconds to pass before you respond, you will be conveying to the other person very clearly that you are carefully considering the other person's remarks and you are avoiding the risk of interrupting. And one other advantage to pausing is that psychologists tell us that you hear better when you pause before replying because the words that the other person has said soak in, if you like, and you get a better understanding of what the other individual actually means. Number four, feed it back in your own words. A very powerful tool and very effective in the world of sales is when a person has made a comment or an observation, feed it back in your own words to make it clear to the other that you fully understand and that you've been listening carefully. Number five, question for clarification. Remember, in conversation, the person who asks questions has control. One of my favorite questions for clarification is simply this. It's, how do you mean? Or, how do you mean exactly? Remember, if there is any question in your mind about what the other person means, you have probably not understood. Ask open-ended questions to control the conversation. All open-ended questions cannot be answered by yes or no. Examples are what, where, when, who, why, and how. These are all questions that encourage the person to expand on the subject. Number seven, ask closed-ended questions to get commitment. A closed-ended question is a question that must be answered yes or no. And closed-ended questions usually begin with verbs like, are you going to be making a decision today? Is this what you're looking for? Does that make sense to you? And something and that so is on. praiseworthy. Another key to approval is to be immediate. If somebody does something, give them the praise immediately afterwards. Praise delayed is usually praise that has no effect at all. Be specific when you praise. If a person has done a good job on a specific item, say, you've done an excellent job on this item. Always praise specifically what you would like to see repeated. And two other points on approval. If you would like to develop a habit in another person, praise continuously until the habit is developed. If you would like to maintain the habit, then praise intermittently afterwards. In other words, praise the person every second or third time they do it to maintain the habit in place. Another key to cooperative human relations is admiration. Abraham Lincoln said, everybody likes a compliment. And the two things that you can quite safely compliment people on are their traits or their possessions. You certainly are punctual, or that's very generous of you, or you certainly are working hard today, is complimenting a person on their traits. People are very proud of their personal traits. Or compliment people on their possessions. People place a lot of emotional significance on the possessions that they surround themselves with. If you praise a person's car, you can never go wrong. Praising a person's children, praising a person's house, or praising a person's clothes, or praising a person's furniture in their house or in their office will always be greeted well by the other person. It raises the other person's self-esteem and makes them far more receptive to working cooperatively with you. And finally, agreeability. Be agreeable. Be an agreeable person. Be the sort of person that people like to have around because you are not argumentative or difficult. And even if you disagree, ask yourself always, how important is this? And if it's not important, let it pass. One of the characteristics of people that we always enjoy is that they smile, they say thank you, they praise and approve our behaviors and our actions, they admire our possessions, and they're agreeable and they're easy to get along with. Now to encourage teamwork, remember this, that in business and in industry and in all organizations, in our society today, all work is done by teams. And your ability to work well on a team and your ability to build an effective team to get the job done is going to determine your success as much as any other single factor. So here are some keys to encourage teamwork. Number one, make sure everyone knows what you are trying to accomplish. Make sure everyone knows what you are trying to accomplish. Make it clear that everybody on the team knows what the goals or objectives of the team are. Make sure that everybody knows why you are trying to accomplish it. What is the reason? What is the purpose? Who will be affected and how much? People will go a long way to help you achieve the what 
if they know the why. I find that in running my offices, I always explain to my secretaries why a letter is to be typed. If I ask a person to place a call, I tell them why. If I ask them to book an airplane flight, I always tell them the reason for it. When a person knows why something is to be done, they have the opportunity to exercise their imagination to find different and even better ways to do it. Point number two on teamwork is to make sure everyone knows exactly what they are expected to contribute individually. It's very important that when you build a team, each team member knows exactly what part they are to play and each other team member knows every other team member's part. And they also know the standard of performance that is expected of each job. Number three is make each team member personally responsible for at least one complete part of the job. Each person on a team has to have 100% responsibility for at least one part of the endeavor. When a person has responsibility for one complete part, one discrete unit, as we say, that gives them a feeling of control and personal responsibility on the job. Whereas if they do not have a discrete part of the job to do, it's very easy for them to say that they did their share, and if something isn't done properly, it's not their fault. Number four is give ample praise and recognition for performance. The basic rule with regard to team building is give lots of praise and recognition in public, give criticism and constructive feedback in private. Remember, there's always enough praise to give away. Remember, there's always enough credit to go around. And the very best leaders and the best team builders are those who give all the credit to the team members and take all the accountability on their own shoulders. Number five, personally accept 100% responsibility for anything that goes wrong. Take the blame and share the glory. That exceptional executives are always those who, if a person does not do the job, accept that it is their responsibility for having put the person in the job in the first place. Remember, people make mistakes, and it often happens that you will put a person in a job for which they are not suited. If that's the case, it is not the person's fault. It is the fault of the executive who put them in that position, and it is the responsibility of the executive to remove them. Number six, never criticize, condemn, or complain. It lowers morale and robs people of self-esteem. The very best team leaders are those who never criticize or complain about the performance of the players. They give constructive feedback. They give their players advice on how they can do better next time, but they never criticize them or run them down. And number seven, remember, everything that you do that makes other people feel good about themselves, boosts your own self-esteem, and makes you a more dynamic, successful person. The real key to cooperative human relations is to treat everyone as though they were the most important person in the world, a million-dollar customer. And as I said earlier, your ability to get along with others, your ability to function well on teams, your ability to work well in meetings, and to cooperate effectively with other human beings will more than anything else determine the height to which you will rise in your field or industry. Thank you.